Hello everyone! Have you ever wondered how the viruses come about in the first place? Well, good news! Because today, I'll be telling you more about the origin of viruses. To, share, to tell you more about the origin of viruses, I'll share with you three main scientific theories that seek to explain how viruses have evolved from the past to the present. Before we move on into that, however, we first need to know a few simple facts about viruses. By definition, viruses are small infectious agents that replicate only inside the living cells of other organisms. They have an extremely simple cellular structure comprising of a capsid, nucleic acids, and a glycoprotein jelly coat. While viruses have many other secondary structures, in addition to these three main structures, these three are the main structures. You can see here, here is a diagram of a typical animal virus. Inside lies the nucleic acid, which is enclosed by the capsid, and the surrounding things are spikes that allow it to hook on to other cells to infect them. Now, a virus has a basic replication cycle, which mainly consists of invading a whole cell and then using the machinery of the whole cell to carry out viral replication. More on this later. Now, we can move, now we can move on to the first hypothesis, the regressive hypothesis, which seeks to explain how viruses have evolved over time. As you can see here, the regressive hypothesis states that viruses will want smaller cells that parasitize larger cells. However, over time, they realize, the cells realize that their parasitism was so much more useful and dependent that they abandoned the genes required for them to survive outside a whole cell. As a result, they evolve over time to become the viruses we know today that can only replicate inside host cells. Evidence for this seems to lie in the bacteria known as Rickettsia. Although this is a bacteria, not a virus, its replication cycle is extremely similar to that of a virus. Let's take a look over here. As you can see here, this is the Rickettsia bacteria. It infects a healthy cell, and then it takes over the cell's DNA and replaces it with its own. Following that, it uses its host machinery to form other more new bacteria cells. With that, the cell, it causes the cell to lyse, and the bacterial cells escape to infect other, other, other organisms. However, the main problem with this theory on how viruses have evolved from smaller cells that used to parasite larger cells is that cellular parasites of today and viruses of today share almost no resemblance whatsoever. If this theory was true, then it would be logical to assume that cellular parasites would have some form of similarity to viruses today, given that this theory states that viruses have evolved from cellular parasites. As you can see for these two diagrams drawn, the cellular parasites comprises of many more complex organelles such as the Golgi body, the nucleus, and mitochondria, whereas a typical virus only consists of the three main uh, uh, structures that I mentioned earlier, such as the protein called nucleic acids, and the nucleic acids. Now with the theory out of the way, let's look at the second theory, which is the co-evolution hypothesis. The co-evolution hypothesis states that viruses had evolved from complex molecules of proteins and nucleic acids from the beginning of time. To put it simply, it states that the viruses evolved from proteins into viroids, and then into other, uh, other forms of viruses, such as the hepatitis virus. Now, why is a viroid? A viroid, to put simply, is just an RNA molecule, or in short, a virus without its glycoprotein jelly code, which is in essence also an RNA molecule. Now, this theory seems to be supported by the hepatitis virus in general. This is because the hepatitis virus is all, has two forms of hepatitis virus, the hepatitis delta virus and the hepatitis beta virus. The hepatitis delta virus is similar to a viroid as it's just a RNA, it's basically just an RNA molecule. However, for it to survive and replicate, it requires a protein code, and this is only given to it by the hepatitis beta virus. Therefore, for a hepatitis delta virus to replicate, in both the hepatitis delta and hepatitis beta virus have to infect the same cell in order for the hepatitis delta virus to undergo replication in the first place. Now, why is this example seem, uh, is seen to be evidence for the co-evolution hypothesis? The co-evolution hypothesis basically states that viruses had evolved from proteins to viroids to viruses. If this was true, then hepatitis B would be the intermediate step between a viroid and a virus, as it uh, is uh, only an RNA molecule 
and does not yet have a glycoprotein jelly coat, which is one of the main structures of a virus that I mentioned earlier. The flaw with this theory, however, it seems to, it seem, is that it seems to go against the very definition of a virus, which is that it's a small infection agent that can only replicate inside host cells. To elaborate on this further, this suggests that viruses, that viruses are living things that can only replicate inside a host cell and do not require any addi audi uh, additional things such as other viruses, which is, the hep which is what hepatitis beta virus actually needs to have. Now, let's look at the last theory, which is on the cellular origin hypothesis. The cellular origin hypothesis states that viruses evolve from bits and pieces of DNA and RNA, such as plasmids and transposons. Now, you may ask, what are plasmids and transposons exactly? Plasmids are pieces of naked DNA that can move between cells, and transposons are molecules of DNA that replicate and move around to different positions within the cell. In short, they consist of genetic material that have already been uh, able to be mobile both within in, and outside the cell. Thus, the theory seems to have some credibility as it seems likely that this genetic material is able to code for some of the simple, very simple structures of a virus. However, the flaw within this theory is that it does not explain how virus structures have come to have such other complex structures beyond the three basic structures. As I earlier mentioned, as you can see here, this animal virus has spikes. And this animal virus has a sheath in a, in a, which allows it to attach to other living cells. If the, co if the cellular origin hypothesis was true, viruses would not be able to have such complex structures as the genetic material within plasmids and transposons is simply not enough to code for such complex structures. Thank you, thank you for listening to my video today. I hope you have gained more insight into how viruses have evolved into being. Although we do not have an exact answer yet, the future of science continues to progress and hopefully one day we have an answer as to how these viruses have come to plague us. Thank you.